Alright Mr. Palmer here, uh, video on Cardinal Maps. Okay, so um, what you should be able to do after watching this video is simplify 2 and 3 term Boolean expressions using a K map. Um, it's an easy way of creating quite concise expressions. Okay, so why do we use K maps? Basically, there's many, many different laws of uh, um, binary, simplifying binary expressions and binary logic. Um, I got bored here when I was typing up this list. So basically, um, the K map is an easy way of applying these kinds of laws in order to simplify expressions. All right, the K map looks something like this. Basically, you've got your um, this is for two inputs um, on a um, for a logic circuit, and you basically map out what the different the values, the outputs of the different conditions would be based on the inputs. Okay, so uh, each um, input sorry each output is basically represented as a coordinate pair so for example that arrow is pointing to the coordinate pair of uh, the inversion of x and y so not x and y <clears throat> so if if in the case of our logic circuit not x and y was producing a false output then we would put a zero in that um, box and if not x and y was producing a positive output true value then we would put a one in it <clears throat> So you can see there um, the coordinates. So A represents um, not x, not y. B is not x and y. C is x, not y. And D is x and y. All right. Um, it doesn't matter what order you put the x's and y's on there, as long as you keep the x's on one side and the y's on the other. All right. Uh, when you simplify, it's good to remember this. If you look at that highlighted purple loop, all right, we got uh, the first coordinate represents not x, not y, and then the second coordinate is represented by not x and y. Okay, so if you look at that expression that I've written, the second line, you can simplify it. Uh, I forget the name of which law it is now. It's about three in the morning. Uh, so it becomes not x uh, and not y or y. Well, one plus zero is one, therefore, it just simplifies right down to not x. Basically, the thing that's not changing is the end result of the expression. Uh, the bottom row is pretty much the same. You can see you've got x and not y, or x and y. x is the common um, input, so we can simplify it down. And uh, not y plus y is the same as 1, so therefore, the result is x. The same applies to the columns because they can simplify down to not y or y. All right, and these are these you should remember these basically when you're simplifying expressions because it strips out um, a lot of unnecessary um, inputs in your conditions. So if we're going to look at the sample expression below, uh, we're going to look at stage one basically is where we're going to show the expression by breaking down each sub part, each sub expression between the ors to fill in the map. All right. So if we look at the expression first of all, we can see that there is no not x and not y. Therefore, the output of not x and not y is going to be false. So we just stick a zero in there straight away. Next, if we look at not x and y, that's obviously um, in our expression producing a true output. So therefore, we put a one into that coordinate in the corner map, in our k map. And then if we look at the second part, uh, x and not y gives us a one. And then the final part, x and y, gives us a 1 as well. So that's stage 1, breaking down each subpart and then filling in the map based on what the output of that part of the expression would be. Next thing we do is we identify the paired loops to simplify the expression. So if we look at this, we've got one loop going down, that's the blue loop, and we've got the pink loop going across. Okay. Now if you think back to the what I asked you to remember earlier, that blue loop basically simplifies down to y and the red loop, pink loop, simplifies down to x. So the simplified expression basically is x or y. And that's the, the third stage where basically you all the different parts of the expression together. So uh, if you don't believe me, there's a truth table. You can hit pause and you can compare the truth table for the complex expression at the top versus the simplified expression at the bottom. You should see that it's just basically an all gate. Uh, so the steps of using came up with this first part is you fill in the table for each subpart of the expression. 
Remember, each coordinate represents what the output of that part of the expression would be. If it's going to be true, you put in a 1. If it's a false, you put in a 0. Now, the next bit is you identify the adjacent ones by drawing loops. Uh, they need to be in pairs. You try and include all ones in at least one loop. That way you're simplifying as much as possible. You can have a one in, more, in multiple loops and you want to try and use as few loops as possible. Then you take each loop and you write down the term that it represents. That's the second stage. The third stage is basically you all the loop terms together. So you practice. This is the bit where you hit pause and you have a go. And I'm assuming that you've just hit play again and you wanted to go through the working out to see whether you got the right answer or not. So this should be the the, the column, the K map that you've got. Okay. Um, not X, not Y gave you one. Uh, not X and Y gave you one. That's the final part. Uh, X and not Y gave you one. And X and Y is not on there. Therefore, it's a zero. Okay. So you can then identify your paired loops. They simplify down to not X, not Y. So therefore, you simplify the expression. Therefore, you all run together and it gives you not X or not Y. Now, if you want to use three terms, okay, you need to have space for eight coordinate pairs, uh, eight, well, not pairs anymore, coordinate triads on your uh, K map, all right? Because remember, when you got uh, three inputs, therefore you get eight variations, all right? You should know that from when you've been doing your permutations, okay? So uh, each column is basically represented two terms. Remember, the ordering is not sequential. If you look at the, the K map, you can see that basically between each column, only one term is changing. From the first column to the second column, uh, Y change. From the second column to the third column, Z change. From the third to the fourth, Y changed. And you can see if you roll over the edge of the K map back to the other side, from the fourth column to the first column, Z changed. And that's important. You can roll off the end of the K map back onto the other side, and you'll see why in a moment. The other thing, and you well, it's related to the fact that this time you're going to be looking for pairs, but also groups of four. Okay, so an example three term simplification. There's my expression. That's the K map that I get from it. You can have a look at it and work it out in your own time. And when I, you can see that I've got my loops on there. So basically, those loops simplify down to those expressions. The reason for me it coming down to just X and Z for the pink loop is that uh, X and Z are the common terms that are not changing across the loop. OK, so if you remember, not Y and Y together basically will be, um, cancel each other out. All right. Um, if you want to write that out, it will be um, X, not Y, Z or X, Y, Z. And therefore, X and Z simplify out of that, and Y and not Y cancel each other out. Same thing for the column. You can see that X, not X, and X are they're the two terms that are changing down the blue loop. Therefore, the simplified term is just going to be Y, Z. All right. Uh, if I now, uh, so there you go. That's the expression down there at the bottom in purple y and z or x and z uh, but that actually can be simplified further and i can actually break it down into z and x or y and that will be my simplified term if you don't believe me you can draw the truth table and you can work it out yourself so when you need to loop for groups of four in three term k maps you can look for groups of four like the pink loop there like the yellow loop there at the bottom or as I said before you can roll over the edge of the K map and back onto the other side all right so that's also a group of four uh, pairs can overlap with groups of four as well that's not a problem so basically what you need to do now is you need to simplify these three expressions and you bring them to class uh, and we will be going through them in the lesson when you come in and if you've done all of this successfully, you should be able to simplify two and three term Boolean expressions using a K map. And that's me done, and I'm off the bed.